Okay, so basically today we're going to be looking at router firmware hacking, um, specifically extraction. About 90% of this is going to be a PowerPoint, so... Anyway, uh, so yeah, this is for educational purposes only, of course. I don't really name anyone's firmware in this, and there isn't a lot used. Um, so, no problems there. And the lawyer cat objects to it. I really don't like cat memes, but that got me. That really did. So why? Why would we want to go into a router firmware? Why would we want to go to any firmware, really? Well, a lot of people don't really do it. A lot of people do web applications and um, phones, but they don't really go into embedded devices. And I think it's starting to be a thing because of the Internet of Things, but it's still it still hasn't got its pace yet. So I think I should sort of outline some stuff here. Maybe some, some people will be interested in it. I know there are some people out there that have um, reached out to me and said, yeah, I, I've done this for years, and so I am sort of look like the newbie to them. But, you know, I'm, ju I'm just trying to spread the sort of idea that people should be looking into embedded devices. Why do we want this? There could be possibly backdoors into your system that you may want to check out. I mean, come on, it's a backdoor. Um, no one wants that since the NSA revelations. Uh, possible exploits. Um, you know, everyone loves exploits. It's understandable. Um, you can, you know, once you've found an exploit, you can then run traffic and get an iframe running to see if you can possibly... Um, get into the system and then we've got possible hidden features that you know they've left in there but are kind of interesting and that we can use to pawn the system or maybe just have fun with really so and also I thought I'd include um, some leet speak as we talked about so much stuff that a lot of people seem to like so if you're going to go into firmware hacking I advise Ubuntu not anonymous OS live which is down the bottom there um, Ubuntu, please, Ubuntu. I've tried so many operating systems and Ubuntu has just stuck for the ride, really. Um, so, yeah, just use Ubuntu in a virtual machine. That's all you need, really. Um, some some overview of the file systems I've looked at and analysed. Um, I've analysed various firmware, from CCTV to routers, as it says, and usually they are squashed file systems. It's quite universal almost um, that sort of format. But there is also UBIF or UB, um, and also there is ZIP. I have seen ZIP being used to distribute firmware. Um, not in the specific sense of it being a .zip or them specifically saying it's a .zip, but it was a .zip, so, well, it was a zip file, an archive, so, you know, whatever. So, um, detecting file systems, it's it's a fairly simple process nowadays. Bimwalk, made by devttys0. I'm not really fully sure if it's an individual or a company. Um, a great blog, unsure what's going on there. Any, they, they have some courses that are at a price, and, um, yeah, they have some great research there. Um, I, don't, I literally have nothing else but um, praise for them. Or him, or her, or whoever it is, to be honest. And also, I you can also do the manual sort of side of it. Sometimes Bimwalk doesn't use or other files to sort um, other programs to identify. Maybe you do need to use a hex editor. When it comes down to it, it's magic strings slash magic numbers to uniquely identify the file. Um, and what, I shouldn't put file really. Uniquely identify that part of the file because there can be more than one. Um, thing within firmware that's being distributed. There's many cases um, where there's multiple zip archives and yeah. Anyway, so uh, magic strings for zip is PK and can be searched very easily. Um, they probably won't look like this. This is an actual zip file that I just done for an example and I just basically zipped up a simple file and PK was at the start. That's not how it'll look like. It'll probably look like this um, where you have some random stuff at the top or even a load of stuff. It could be another sort of file um, system itself, and then it has a zip. It's weird. Some firmware has that. And, um, yeah, you've got to uniquely identify um, PKs. But it obviously, something like this, you know, even though it looks like it's a zip file because it has PK, that doesn't mean it is. Um, that, that wouldn't be, obviously, a zip file. It's in the middle of a load of characters. Then there's the unsorted block image file system, um, identified by UB or the other sort of file system, which is very close to UBIF, is 
UB and can you you can use the UB reader um, to extract. I'm not sure if Binwalk actually extracts this to be honest. I didn't extract it this way so if Binwalk does I apologize but I use this tool. Very simple process, very easy to do. All of these are very easy to do. They're automated steps. Um, not hard to do. The hardest part of this is actually debugging the programs and the different architectures that it has. Um, and then there's squash file systems. When I was analyzing squash file systems, um, I came under I came under this um, magic number QSHS. Um, there are I do believe there are others. Um, I can't remember them. I think I've seen one beforehand, but I I can't necessarily remember. Um, it needs bin walk. It needs bin walk or firmware mod kit toolkit. Firmware mod toolkit. That sounded weird. Um, maybe I said that wrong. It's firmware. You can read. And um, yeah, you need them to extract this. And the interesting thing as well is that you can actually compile it back to um, maybe upload it. But you can brick the device. So make sure you're not doing it wrong, basically. <laughs> um, but this is simply about file extraction. And we're close to the end, really. Uh, basically, Bimwalk sudo apt get install bimwalk then look at the file and then e is extract um, if you wanted to know so um, I'm just gonna have a little dabble in bimwalk so I have it within a virtual machine don't judge um, I've got some downloads in the file system so this could go terribly wrong um, so if I just first use there we go then we can see its data if we get bimwalk involved um, Let's just make sure that I'm doing that correct. I've missed the zero. We can see it It sort of gets um, it a little bit better, understands it, and we can actually extract this a whole lot better than maybe we could have. Other things as well, um, if I bin walk, we can see it's all compressed data, but if I use file, oh, not file bin walk, we can see it's actually a squash file system. So if it looks something like that, sometimes don't always use or rely on Bimwalk, which a lot of people do. Don't always rely on it. Look at a hex editor. Um, get involved, really. I think I actually extracted that um, using the DD tool that we have with Ubuntu. One thing that I sort of forgot is also as we can um, specify, um, we can also hex dump within Bimwalk. So this is the hex dump. Um, capital W and then we're going to specify the length as a hundred bytes that's within bytes and then the name of the file and you can get that and as we can see we can see the signature there which is HSQS which is um, yeah I, this is the one I extracted I remember now um, and yeah so if you want to do it within command line you can anyway hope you like the video um, thanks for looking uh, if you're in interested I can continue this I've got a load of other videos coming up that I've I uh, need to continue from previous videos I've made. Um, give me a like, share, comment, do what you call, and tell me if this was good or not. And I'll see you guys later.